Yeah, that's right. That's exactly what tens upon tens of millions of loyal patriots did last night. They didn't waste their time with the Rupert Murdoch sideshow of donor class controlled warmongering puppets like DeSantis and Pence and Taco Bell's favorite customer, Chris Christie, who, of course, is auditioning for a full time gig on CNN. No! Instead, millions upon millions tuned into the Tucker Trump triumph, effectively consigning the GOP debate to complete and utter irrelevance. Hey, gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, your patron professor, here to help you think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. And also make sure to share this video with friends and family. We are once again being throttled by big tech. So I need your help to get the hopeful message of this channel out to as many people as possible. Last night was the official beginning of a new era. It was the official launch, we might say, of a brand new epoch that has for all practical purposes finally sidelined the legacy media. Another way of putting it, last night marked the end of the mainstream media as mainstream. And with it, the power of the legacy media, which for decades remained uncontested, the power of the legacy media has now been rendered absolutely impotent. The teaser for the interview that Tucker released just a few hours before the interview, by the time the interview began, that teaser alone had upwards of 5 million views. A teaser! Five mi- Do you know how much Fox News would give to have 5 million views? They haven't gotten that kind of viewership since they, well, what do you know? Since they fired Tucker who topped off at an average of 4.5 million views at the height of his Fox career. And then the interview started just around 9 p.m. Eastern. Within just three minutes of the interview starting, Tucker's Twitter handle alone had already amassed 10.5 million views. That didn't include the other channels and outlets that featured the interview. This was just Tucker's Twitter channel alone. In the first 10 minutes... Tucker and Trump amassed 20 million views. All told, as of midnight, three hours after the interview went up, Trump and Tucker garnered an astonishing and utterly unprecedented 90 million views. As of the making of this video, it has now hit nearly 160 million views. It was the most watched interview ever in the history of social media. The legacy media is officially dead. They were obliterated last night. And by the way, not to rub it in their faces, but look at this headline from Vanity Fair from just a few weeks back. Tucker Carlson may be losing his relevance. (laughs) Tucker Carlson may be losing his relevance. I mean, could there possibly be a more ironic title. I mean, these people are literally living in their own fantasy land at this point. They're just 24-7 liars. I mean, the level of mindless propaganda is beyond anything anyone who still has a semblance of independent thought could even remotely take seriously. Tucker gets literally a hundred times the audience that CNN and MSNBC could hope to get on their best primetime broadcast ever in the midst of their consistently sagging ratings. And yet it's Tucker. Who's the one who's losing relevance? The legacy media is dead, as evidenced by their own comatose contributors. And it's time that we together finally hammer the final nail in their coffin. That's why if you've been looking for a community with like-minded patriots who are serious about resisting globalism, building the parallel economy, and having intelligent and deep fellowship on a regular basis, then gang, you've come to the right place. And my Courageous Patriot Insiders community, we're building a close-knit movement of, by, and for patriots who are breaking free from the outrage and despair cycles of the mainstream media and taking on the fight against globalism. Every week, I deep dive into the content I can't share on big tech and give you the cliff notes on the truth of how patriots just like you are building up their communities, starting patriot businesses, and fighting the woke in both public 
and private, all with a few history and political lessons from yours truly, of course. If you want to stop feeling alone as a patriot and stand together with this fast-growing community, be sure to click on that link in the description below today. Don't wait. Join me and my Patriot Coalition today, and let's get fighting. Of all the questions asked by Tucker, his opening salvo more than any other revealed just how significant last night really was. Thank you. Why aren't you at the Fox News debate tonight in Milwaukee? Well, you know, a lot of people have been asking me that, and many people said you shouldn't do them, but you see the polls have come out, and I'm leading by 50 and 60 points. And, you know, some of them are at one and zero and uh, two. And I'm saying, do I sit there for an hour or two hours, whatever it's going to be, and uh, get harassed by people that shouldn't even be running for president? Should I be doing that? Uh, and a network that isn't particularly friendly to me, frankly. You know, they, uh, they were back in Ron de Sanctimonious like crazy, and now they've given up on him. I mean, he's, it's a lost cause. It reminded me very much of 2016. You know, in 2016, I went through the same stuff and had to fight them all the way. And then they became very friendly after I won or just about when I was winning. But I just felt it would be uh, more appropriate not to do the debate. I don't think it's uh, right to do it. Uh, if you're leading by 50, 60, I have one problem leading by 70 points. And I'm saying, why am I doing it? And I'm going to have eight people, 10 people, whoever made the debate, I don't know how many it is, but I'm gonna have all these people screaming at me, shouting questions at me, all of which I love answering, I love doing, but it doesn't make sense to do them. So uh, I've taken a pass, as it's, you probably noticed. Oh, I, I did, <laughs> I'm grateful that you did. President Trump is absolutely right there. We have to understand that what happened last night, it wasn't just the tale of two different media an old legacy media decrepit, declining, versus a new independent media that's ascending and thriving. It was also a tale of two fundamentally different politics. A politics of the old guard, the old waning Republican establishment, you know, donor class dictated, warmongering, neocon establishment versus the new guard, the new nationalist, populist, traditionalist politics. The politics of restoration, the politics of the people. This is the politics of the future. This is the politics that, of course, the legacy media, like Fox News, ignores, belittles, ridicules. Fox News is the flagship of Rupert Murdoch, who is himself at the center of donor class control politics, the old establishment politics. What we witnessed last night was the end of the era of both the legacy media and legacy politics that, of course, work in tandem by the donor class. What Trump said there was more profound than any of us may realize. Both Tucker's ratings and Trump's poll numbers reveal that the old media and the old politics are over. A new era, an era of independent content creators and populist politicians emancipated from the controls of the globalist establishment is rising. And as of last night, the world will never be the same.